Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the press, fellow Kenyans. This afternoon, I have a short briefing as we seek to update Kenyans on the current status of coronavirus pandemic in the country. First and foremost, on behalf of the government, the Ministry of Health, and myself personally, I would like to send condolences to the family and friends of the late Captain Daudi Kimuyu Kibati of Kenya Airways, who is being buried this afternoon in his rural home in Kitui. As you know by now, Captain Kibati was the pilot who flew the last Kenya Airways flight from New York to Nairobi on Wednesday the 26th of March before the government's ban on international flights took effect as one of the key measures aimed at containing the spread of the disease. Captain Kibati, together with his colleagues in Kenya Airways flight, took a major risk to go and evacuate Kenyans from America one of the high-risk countries. In fact, it is currently the leading number, has the leading number of coronavirus diseases at 277, over 277,000 reported so far. Captain Kibati managed to evacuate many Kenyans and non-Kenyans from the United States back into our country, but only for him to succumb to the same disease. In other words, he made the ultimate sacrifice. May his soul rest in peace. Kenyans owe him a great deal. On more positive note, on a more positive note, as we informed you yesterday, we are now able and capable to locally manufacture personal protective equipment, PPEs, and therefore to assure all health workers that they are now secure going forward. I would also like to say that our laboratories in Kemri are also involved in serious research to find some of the, to represent, to, 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 to replace some of the imports that uh, we are making outside the country of uh, various items required for testing. They are involved in very heavy work as we speak, and we hope soon we can come up with good news about our ability and self-sustainability in our testing operations. I also wish to inform you that the ministry has operationalized Kenyatta University Teaching Hospital we have been talking about preparing it, but now I can confirm we have operationalized it and we have already over 20 patients or 20 people who we have isolated um, for the coronavirus disease in uh, Kenyatta University Teaching Hospital. We have also started moving persons who have been in designated facilities depending on their status to, pre to prevent them from infections, to avoid congestion in our healthcare facilities, the ministry has also made arrangements for home-based care where we believe and our healthcare um, system believes that that is possible. We are also urging, and we, have, and we said this the other day, that any person visiting a supermarket or any other open-air market to begin wearing protective masks immediately so that we can begin to prevent transmissions in those areas. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Kenyans, I wish to make a special appeal today. I wish to make a special appeal and address a special group of people who are the youth of our nation. The youth are the biggest component of our society. The youth 
are also the people who are largely mobile. The youth are also the people who have got the energy. And I wish to appeal for the unleashing of this energy in fighting the disease. First and foremost, if you look at the statistics, global statistics, it shows two glaring, two very glaring statistics. One is that uh, the youth are the ones who are contacting the disease. But two, the youth are safer than the older people and therefore the carriers who then take it to the older people who get it and then the older people die in larger and larger numbers. Therefore, I want to appeal to the Kenyan youth as follows. First, I wish to appeal to them to become part of the solution to the problem that we are experiencing by taking certain measures. As I said, we do not wish to have people traveling up country. If you travel up country without knowing whether you are positive or negative, it means therefore there is a possibility that you are traveling up country to go and kill your parents or to go and kill your grandparents. The youth in this country have always been able to organize themselves. They have organized themselves in matatus, in matatu structures. Indeed, they saved the matatu industry by organizing themselves into groups, into circles, and so on. The youth have, are the ones who brought some element of sanity in border borders by organizing themselves again into groups with chairmen and committees. They use the border border structure to create welfare uh, for young families. The youth have organized themselves in tuk-tuks, organizations, and managed to run down very well. The youth are the ones who organize themselves into football, netball, and other uh, sporting activities in uh, densely populated areas. The youth are the ones who are running markets, young people are the ones who run markets, they are the ones who sell vegetables and bring them to the, the market ladies. So in other words, I am saying that if we organize ourselves in a similar format, if the youth take the responsibility of organizing themselves in similar format in the fight against coronavirus, they can reach a new impetus we can create the difference between the way we are handling our things in Kenya and the way it is being handled elsewhere by ensuring that the youth are the center of our fight against this disease. Now we are not saying it is going to be easy. We are not even saying that there will be no challenges. And nobody claims that uh, it, is going to be, it is not going to be rough going forward. But I would like to imagine that as the old adage says, when the going gets tough, the tough God get going. And I would like to imagine, and I am, I am positive, that our youth are a tough people, and we can overcome this. But this is, not, this is not a journey that old people can walk alone. This is a journey that requires the energy of youth. It is the responsibility of our youth, therefore, to secure this nation. God in his wisdom or otherwise, God in his wisdom has decided that the youth are the ones, our youth are the ones who have come in to grapple with this new responsibility of a disease unknown to man. There was a generation that fought for independence. There was a generation that has been fighting for economics, but the youth of today have been caught with the responsibility of fighting against this disease. As others have done in the past, I appeal to you to really, really take the responsibility as seriously as the generations that were there with our forefathers. Because if we do not do this, it is also the youth that will suffer the most. 
It is you, my sons and daughters. It is you, my younger brothers and sisters, who will face your children with no job and a collapsed economy. It is you who will face us, your parents, as you watch us get sickly and there is nothing you will be able to do. And worse, it is you who will bury us, not in small numbers, but in very large numbers. Is that something that you, that you would like to do? If it is not what you want to do, then the road ahead, the path ahead is clear. We have got to observe and be part of the solution to the problem. The football teams can now convert themselves into cleanup groups that clean up our streets, our mita. The market youth leaders can inspect and working with our security forces ensure that social distancing is being observed in markets, in supermarkets. It is our youth who can be able to patrol with our police and assisting the police to ensure that distances are being kept even as we walk, even as we get into matatus. And it is our youth who can assist even those from universities who are at home. It is those who can join our medical forces and assist as volunteers to take care of those who eventually fall unwell. And so I appeal to them in a very special way to take this responsibility in the seriousness that um, we must. Yani, nataka kusema, mimi nataka kuwasihi vijana na wasiana wetu tujitayarishe kulinda hii nchi yetu kutoka kwa hii viruzi. Kila vizazi ama generation, kila vizazi katika maisha hii yetu Tangu, tangu huru wetu, kila vizazi imepatiwa kazi yao na mungu mwenyewe. Na vizazi hii ya leo, imepatiwa jukumu la kupigana na hii virusi, diyo kenya yetu tuisije tukaisha. Nyinyi, munajua kujipanga, munajipanga katika matatu, munajipanga na uongozi ambao tumeona katika tuktuk, mipango ya tuktuk, katika masoko na jukumu ile imepata vijana wakati huu ni kuokoa sisi wazee na kujiokoa nyinyi wenyewe tusipofanya hivyo tusipofanya hivyo wale ambao watakuwa na shida kubwa ni nyinyi vijana ambao ni watoto wangu na ni watoto wetu ni nyinyi ambao mtaanza kuwa na shida ya kuangalia mtoto akiwa mdogo na hana chakula ama wewe mwenyewe una kazi kwa sababu uchumi wetu uchumi wetu utaenda utaathirika na kufa ni nyinyi vijana wetu ambao tusipofanya vile tunasema mtaanza kuwa na wazazi kama mimi na wengineo ambao watakuwa wagonjwa na mzazi wale wazee mzee hawezi kuchunga mzee Ni vijana wetu wataanza kutushunga sisi wenyewe. Na tukiendelea hivyo tusipojihathari basi nyinyi vijana wetu vijana na wasiana wetu nyinyi jukumu letu jukumu lenu ndio itakuwa kutuzika sisi wazazi wenu. Na mimi nafikiria hakuna muyuth hata mmoja anaweza kutaka ama kupenda kuwa na hiyo kazi ngumu sana. Kwa hivyo jameni, kwa hivyo jameni mimi na wasihi, na wasihi sana. Tujipange kwa mitaa vile tunajipanga kazi ingine. Tujipange kuangalia kwamba watu wasikabiliane. Tujipange kwa masoko. Ndio watu wakiambiwa watumie vitambaa, mchikane na polisi, mfanye kazi pamoja kwa wakati huu, mwasaidie Musaidia wafanyi kazi wa afya ndio nyinyi sasa muwe katikati ya kupigana na hii virusi. Kwa hivyo leo nilikuwa na hiyo eno moja nilikuwa nataka kuzungumzia youth wetu nilikuwa nataka kuwasihi 
Nitakuwa nataka kuwaomba nyinyi muwe katika vita hii na njia ingine njia mpya ya kupigana na hii kwa sababu mimi nikisikiza na nikitembea katika masoko wale ambao hawashukui hii maneno na ngumu naona kama ni vijana na wasichana chukueni hii kitu na nguvu ndio tuweze kupigana na hii um, epidemic ama hii virusi Ladies and gentlemen, over the last 24 hours, we have tested over 300 people for coronavirus. Out of the 372 samples that we have taken, four have tested positive for the disease. The four are three Kenyans and one Pakistani national. In terms of gender, we have three who are male and one who is female. Two of them traveled from Malawi and Pakistan, respectively, while the other two contracted it locally. Their ages range from 34 years for the youngest and 44 years for the oldest. Out of the 2,050 individuals who have been in mandatory quarantine, 1,866 have so far been tested, and we are remaining with 184 individuals. Contact tracing remains the largest activity that uh, we have right now, and about 1,781 contacts have been monitored. We have managed to discharge about 1,100 people from our follow-up program on the expiry of 14 days. Currently, we are also monitoring some 672 people in our follow-up program. Ladies and gentlemen, we have had cases of people testing positive in our quarantine facilities. Indeed, currently, they rank among the highest. This is likely to pose a risk of more transmissions, especially among those who have been sharing facilities or those who have not taken seriously the distancing requirements. As I said earlier, there are those who actually went on putting sprees in quarantine facilities. This is against every protocol that we have issued. But in a bid to further contain any transmission arising from those in mandatory quarantine, we have instructed our medical teams to extend quarantine facility, quarantining those in facilities which we believe have got individuals who need another 14 days, given the fact that the contacts that they have within the quarantine facilities have tested positive. Now we appreciate that this is going to be very inconveniencing you know, to quite a number of people. And we apologize in advance. But to secure, to secure Kenyans, it is an, a, 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 an activity or a position that we have regrettably had to take. What I would like to appeal even to those whose quarantine period has been extended, and it is not all, it is not all those who are quarantined. It is only in those areas where our medical personnel feel that it is necessary because of the contacting that has been going on in those facilities and the discovery of positive cases in the same. So what I would like to appeal is that those in quarantine facilities, please understand, the whole concept of quarantining you is so that you can stay away, keeping your social distance, reducing contacts as much as possible, so that whatever status you have remains yours alone. The reason why those people are quarantined is because there is we suspect 
that some could be positive because of their travel. Consequently, we urge you, we urge you, those of you who are in quarantine facilities, we urge you that you do exactly that, quarantine yourself. Finally, I also want to talk to the issue of gatherings. Gatherings, for some odd reason, there is a relaxed atmosphere about people who are gathering in groups. And I want to once again stress that there is a government directive in accordance with the Public Health Act that we should not gather anywhere. I, I, we were even hearing rumors about a group of over 6,000 people who wanted to gather somewhere in this town for some odd reason. And I would like to say that such a gathering will not take place. So let's be reasonable. I appeal to Kenyans to adhere to the rules so that enforcement becomes unnecessary. We are thankful to those who continue to obey the guidelines that have been given, the guidelines regarding curfew, the guidelines regarding social distancing, the guidelines regarding hygiene measures of washing your hands. We are grateful that you are doing that, and you like to urge that you continue to do so. And you like those who are not, you like to appeal to you to desist from any defiance of the rules that are made so that we can save Kenyans. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.